Hey guys, welcome back. So with continuing our talks on Philip K. Johnson's Hulk series, we are picking back up with a wild story here. Because now that the Hulk has found the frozen Charlotte, he's getting ready to discover that there's a lot more to her story than he thought. So with that said, if you're enjoying these videos, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so coming back, we pick up after the hulked out murder mystery that led the Hulk right to the frozen Charlotte, who just might be the creepiest creature I've seen the Hulk fight in a long time, because for well over a hundred years, she's been in New Orleans taking the souls of children and trapping them in little porcelain-like dolls, and who knows how long she's done this in other locations prior to this one. And now with the Hulk finding her underground lair, which is also referred to as her sanctuary, he's now got to figure out where exactly Charlie is so he can get her out of here. And as it stands, all the Hulk really has to go off of is the voice of Charlie, who's just popping off right now from a distant room and telling the frozen Charlotte to let her go. But right here, when we go back to the Hulk, who's currently fighting this creature, it's here where we find out more about what exactly he's up against. Because prior to this, she made it clear that her true name is Nephilim, the mother of angels, and this is her sanctuary, though the Hulk may know her as the frozen Charlotte, because up to this point, the frozen Charlotte is what we were introduced to her as, because after she was discovered in New Orleans, and the media got a glimpse to what she was doing to her victims, that's where she got her name. But now that she's made it clear that her name is Nephilim, it's the build up from there that makes her even creepier than what I thought she was up to this point. And we'll get around some more of that in a little bit. But first, when the Hulk shows up, she refers to him as the Fractured Son, which right there lets us know that Nephilim's aware of the call that was made by the eldest, with her sending every monster after the Hulk, though for Nephili, much like we saw with the new Ghost Rider, she isn't taking heed to that call. She's just out here doing her own thing. And it's almost like she believes that call is beneath her. And you'll see what I mean as this story unfolds. But right here, we find her telling the Hulk how Charlene is calloused and broken beauty, and how the Hulk and his world had ruined her, which again is why Nephili refuses to let Charlene go because in her twisted mind, she believes she's saving these kids. So she goes on to tell the Hulk, Charlene would have been a beauty, if not for your kind, protected and cared for. Do you know she prayed for a hero to find her and her brother for years, she prayed. A soldier of virtue and a life of great deeds. She'd been a worthy squire, brave and true, but her prayers brought only beatings, burnings, death for the brother and blame for her. And when God finally saw fit to answer her prayer, he sent you. So now this more or less has the Hulk like, what are you trying to say? That she's safer with you? Charlie's safe here? Like the rest of these victims? <laughs> nah. So Hulk continues to wrestle with Nephilim, which then breaks the ground underneath them, sending them to an even lower level. And as they fall further into her sanctuary, she goes on to reveal more about herself by first telling Hulk she knows what awaits them. Enslavement for the obedient, agony for the wayward which is why she believes that she must save them because long ago she was the chosen consort of lucifer morningstar himself and she tells the hulk when my beloved waged war against heaven he swore i would be queen of paradise a mother to all the angels of heaven and so i cast my lot with the light bringer and was exiled when he fell i took refuge on earth nesting in the dung and the straw of mortals hiding in caves among the blind witless things that crawl on their bellies in the dark the immortals hunt me still, for thousands of years they've hunted me, angels and devils above and below, all seeking to punish me, but they'll not rob me of what was promised. The Lightbringer said I would be a queen of angels, and so I am. There are innocents here, beings pure of heart, angels of sort. I have seen them, watched them, and after a time, I began collecting them. I craft vessels for their souls that will far outlast their fragile bodies here in the dark, where the tyrants of heaven and hell can never hurt them again. Which, yeah, all of that sounds a lot like the corruption of the Lightbringer, and not the hammer, but rather the story of Lucifer and his flaming sword. Cause not too long ago, we talked about the story where God created the flaming sword for Lucifer out of the matter of creation itself, with it recently showing up in the Brian Hill Blade series. And I have that linked down in the description for anyone who needs to check it out or get caught up. But long story short, anyone who uses the Lightbringer for too long, they'll be corrupted by the will of Lucifer, most notably his pride. But in this case with Nephilim, I'm pretty sure this has more to do with Lucifer himself rather than the sword that was named after him. Because even still, this would explain her false entitlement to a promise that she's held on to for millennia. 
which as you might imagine, just makes for an insane amount of delusion. Hence the children being her angels and trapped into dolls. But at the end of the day, you know, after the Hulk hears this story, he's just like, I don't care. Shut up. You're stupid. I don't care about you. <laughs> Which, I mean, in my humble opinion, it was a great story, but I understand why we're here, Hulk. Hand your business. Because the only thing the Hulk cares about in this moment is finding Charlie and making sure she's safe. So he's not going to let Nephili get in the way of that. And even though this fight has been going back and forth for some time now, Nephili still ends up getting smashed because the Hulk is the strongest there is. So in a matchup based on just pure physical strength, that just has the Hulk coming out on top here. And after wearing out the old lady, eventually the Hulk hears Charlie calling in the distance. So from here, Hulk goes following Charlie's voice, only for Nephilim to crawl out of the hole he pounded her into because she's ready for round two. But this time, instead of using brute strength, she changes into her true form, which is that of the fallen angel that she became eons ago. And just to give a bit more on her backstory, since all of it isn't expressed throughout the narrative, but we're told at a later point that eons ago, in heaven, Nephilim was the first and most beautiful of the Nephilim, who eventually drew the eye of the greatest of angels, brightest Lucifer. And following this, Nephilim awakened in him a desire then unknown in heaven, a desire to touch her and to possess her. So after this, Lucifer told her in secret, soon dominion over heaven and earth will pass to me and you will be my queen. The seed of our creator I will strike down and raise up two in its place, and you will be as a mother to all angels in heaven." Which that in itself just goes on to further explain the false entitlement that she's still holding on to, because after failing to overthrow the throne, the skies of heaven burned and many angels fell, which is what brought her and many others to earth, to where much like them, her beauty was stripped from her as well. Hence the not so attractive appearance. So from here with Nephilim going back to her true form, instead of attempting to use strength against the Hulk, which in itself was another attribute the Nephilim were known for, their great strength. But again, with that not working here for her against the Hulk, with her breathing this white flame, that's depicted to be like fire, but also like ice, because you know, she is the frozen Charlotte. Though either way, with her attacking the Hulk with this, she ends up destroying a number of her dolls, who she also refers to as her angels or her babies, which immediately defeats the purpose of the whole protection thing she was talking about earlier. And after this, her sanctuary then opens up into what I can't help but to describe as a boss battle arena, because it gets pretty crazy here, because her sanctuary just opens up and there's floating islands. It's, it's wild. Like Bayonetta would have a field day here. And when this happens, Nephili, she's doing her aerial maneuvers only to find the Hulk right behind her doing his, which for him is just jumping from one floating island to the next. And eventually when he catches up with her, he lets her have it once again. And to go back to the whole boss battle analogy, I'd have to say that this moment here is like your QTE in God of War, where not only do you catch the button for the quick time event, but it's like you keep hitting it for multiple attacks within that same sequence because Nephilim just gets wrecked here. But eventually, to everyone's surprise, Lucifer shows up, letting her know that he's been looking for her for some time. And from here, Lucifer ends up taking her away. But before he does, he tells the Hulk that she's not going to give the mortal world any more trouble. So going forward, the Hulk's business with the frozen Charlotte is concluded. And much like we talked about with Nephilim earlier, Lucifer has no desire to be involved with the eldest and her pursuit of the Hulk. But before he leaves, he tells the Hulk, whatever he finds beyond that door, do not look for Nephilim again or him. Which from here, now with the fight being over, this leads the Hulk back inside so he can get Charlie and they can get out of here. But when the Hulk goes back in, he hears Charlie's voice, but he doesn't see her anywhere. And she tells him that she can't see anything either, which right there just sounds like something we heard earlier in this series. That was definitely not a good thing. So as the Hulk makes his way further inside, to his surprise, he comes to find that Charlie has already been placed in one of the dolls. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support and for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below where you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. So yeah, following this, when we get into Dr. Voodoo in the soul cage, 
I can only imagine that the process of getting Charlie out of that doll and back into a physical body, it's gonna result in Charlie getting some powers of her own, similar to the origin of Jennifer Walters, though in this case, just a lot darker. But either way, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.